court is to decide solely the question of whether the defendant is fit or unfit to be heard and further whether he might even be considered entirely responsible. If his inability to plead is recognized, I request that the proceedings against the defendant not be conducted in his absence. Is it not consistent with all the medical opinions that the defendant is capable of understanding the course of the proceedings and that the only defect from which he is suffering is forgetfulness about what happened before he flew to England. Mr. President, it is true that the experts consider the defendant has capable of following the proceedings. But, on the other hand, in answer to the questions put to them, they emphasize that the defendant is not capable of defending himself. He has refused every simple treatment that has been suggested. He's refused to submit to the ordinary things that we submit to every day, blood tests and uh, examinations, and uh, says he will submit to nothing until after the trial. His uh, uh, amnesia is not of the type that's a complete blotting out of the personality, of the type uh, that uh, uh, is, uh, would be fatal to his defense. Uh, so we, uh, uh, we feel that uh, so long as Hess refuses the ordinary, simple expedients, uh, even if his amnesia is genuine, that he is not in a position to continue to assert that he must not be brought to trial. We think he should be tried, not tried in absentia, but that this trial should... Mr. President, I would like to say this. At the beginning of the proceedings this afternoon, I gave my defense counsel a note saying I thought the proceedings could be shortened if I would be allowed to speak. I wish to say the following. In order to forestall the possibility of my being pronounced incapable of pleading in spite of my willingness to take part in the proceedings, and to hear the verdict alongside my comrades, I would like to make the following declaration before the tribunal, although originally I intended to make it during a later stage of the trial. Henceforth, my memory will again respond to the outside world. The reason for simulating loss of memory were of a tactical nature. Only my ability to concentrate is, in fact, somewhat reduced. But my capacity to follow the trial, to defend myself, to put questions to witnesses, or to answer questions myself is not affected thereby. I emphasize that I bear full responsibility for everything that I did, signed, or co-signed. My fundamental attitude that the tribunal is not competent is not affected by the statement I have just made. I also simulated loss of memory in consultations with my officially appointed defense counsel. He has, therefore, represented it in good faith. 